Hey guys and girls, just uh, first time doing this little post here, but I just thought I'd um, sort of touch in. I just want to sort of talk about really emigrating to Australia from the UK as a carpenter, because that's exactly what I did eight years ago, 2015. Um, when we were looking at the process, I guess there was a lot of a lot of questions that. Um, we had and an no one really to answer those questions um, in terms of how much it's different here, how much oh, earning potential, living, everything like that. Look, it's it's just such a, an insane thing to to think back of all those those things that go through your head, and you know, like even just the friends and family aspect to it. Like everything about it's such a big decision, and I guess when you've got a trade and a career, like. You, you always wonder what 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 is it going to be like when you go to the other side and you know like to the overseas and have to try and start again and learn new things but the one thing i will say it's it's never going to be an easy road because like you know one thing and uh, and your career is what it is like your trade you, you, you know like if you're like me like everything about you is um is, is your work really like i was all for i was passionate about my my trade and i loved what i done um and still do but it's just very different i guess like you just have to adapt to new new ways and new things um i guess the initial sort of start to things for us was basically just wanting a different lifestyle and just wanting to try something new um we didn't have kids at the time when we were thinking oh we would like to bring our kids up in a different country just with with a new lifestyle um and that's hard because we had family back in the uk at the time but i guess in terms of in terms of actually making that move like it took us a little while to say yeah this this is this is definitely like we're going to do it because we'd, we'd never even been to australia look we hadn't even ventured to to the country so it was crazy that we we just sort of we just sort of made that move um so coming over as a carpenter is it's 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 not it's not hard like i guess in terms of if you've already got the skills and the qualifications like and you can pass an english exam the english exam was actually harder than what, than what i expected it was like going back to to school level like gcsd i suppose like but i suppose that i was 31 so i suppose like by then like you you're well out of that sort of situation so sitting exams at, at that level is it, it is hard for anyone i suppose but um, actually just gathering the evidence and, and doing everything that was required for the for the process. Now, we went through an immigration group. They were called the immigration group and we paid them a lump sum and they done everything for us, literally just told us what to do. I think they actually, um, they're not around anymore. I heard that they actually, they, they went under. But there is there are other people out there that can help. Um, what we, we the, the main process what, what I'm trying to say is that we basically had to get evidence in terms of all photos of my work in the UK so I had to take photos of myself doing carpentry because they don't just accept your qualification you have to actually convert it and they the only re the way they'll convert it is like um, a prior learning sort of process so they need to know that you actually do that for a living so that they don't just trade like for like on qualification so 20 photos, I had to write up about every single one what I was doing in each photo. Um, from that point, I think I had to get a stat deck done saying that I worked as a carpenter in the UK for so many years and that was signed by a lawyer. Then I had to go to London and do a little exam, a carpentry exam, which was practical, I guess, like they just got me to cut and pitch a little roof and it was just a little model thing answer some health and safety questions um from that point then i was granted my cert free in carpentry australia which then allowed me to have the qualification to come over on a skilled migrant um visa 
which was perfect because when we got to the country we, we we actually had full residency um which after five years on full residency you can actually apply for citizenship and it gave you the well the ability to do whatever you wanted when you got to the country like you could literally live anywhere work anywhere you could self-employed you could go with well, you could it, it, there was no limits you could live here as a as just a resident for for as long as you like but the only the only clause is when after five years when you leave the country you have to you have to buy a return visa to get back in and out of the country so it, it pays to get citizenship but um i guess all of that process is is <laughs> was hard but it, it's the easiest part of the of the journey i guess because when you when you actually arrive here um if you think you're just going to be walking into a an english carpenter role um it's it's very different from that like the 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 trade's very segmented here so it's very much set in certain categories like if you're house framing you tend to just be house framing that's all you're going to be doing you know your second fix is called like fixed work most people would just be sort of doing fixed work only so and then you got your carpentry and stairs which is 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 a different area altogether like you don't really get a general carpenter that can do stairs flooring kitchens um new housework um renovations it's very very separate so kitchens here is is a different trade it's cabinet making it's not it's not it doesn't come under carpentry even in 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 all of the the written literature that you can read it's all it's very 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 um separate so it's yeah it's hard because like i guess being an english carpenter you sort of know a lot of different things you you might you might even lay a few bricks you might actually do a bit of guttering install a downpipe because it's pretty straightforward but it's like unheard of here like you kind of just stick to your own um and the biggest the biggest hurdle i guess is where where you put yourself but not not just where you put yourself but you need a license as well which is a big a big thing if you want to be self-employed you've got to have a license in your trade and your carpentry trade will be a, a set license that only allows you to do carpentry work so you can't just go out and say, I can do that house extension. I can do, I can put in this, I can, I can install your kitchen. I can do your bathroom. Cause that's not, that's not how it works. Carpentry license here allows you to do framing and set carpentry work. So you can do your decks, you can do, um, house framing, you can do things like that, but you can't do structural work at all without a building license. So you can't go into someone's home and take out a structural wall unless you're a licensed builder which then goes into a whole new category of um of fish because i guess it's 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 a really hard one to 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 sort of get as well it's not just a straightforward like oh we see that you know what you're doing let's give him a building like it doesn't work like that like you literally have to jump through a million hoops so for a building license like i'm in queensland so we live in brisbane so in Brisbane, Queensland, you fall under the QBCC, which is the Queensland Building Commission. So there, the way they do it is basically, if you want a building license, you're gonna then have to do a cert four in building and construction, that's fine. You can do that around your working hours, it's easy. I did it six till 10 in the evenings in Melbourne. When we moved here, we moved to Melbourne first. So I spent a year down there and I did I did six till ten at college after I finished up my day job and, and did my cert four because it's what I came to do. I wanted to do building. Um when we moved up to Brisbane I yeah, you I had my cert four but I didn't to apply for the licence back then it was different to now, so I'll talk about it now. But now if you you've got to get your cert four, then you've got to apply for a supervisor's license. So a supervisor's license means that you can work supervising and um, supervising building work under a builder. So you've got to get employed by a builder, 
um, as a supervisor with a supervising license. Now you've got to do that for two years if you're a carpenter if you or a bricklayer. If you're not a carpenter or a bricklayer, you've got to do it for four years regardless of your trade because they don't want you to... I could be wrong on that to be honest, but it used to be two years if you're a carpenter, bricklayer, or four years in another trade because they want carpentry and bricklayers have more knowledge on the, the house builds as well uh, uh, they see it so they're more involved with house building so if you're a painter or if you're a plaster or blah 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 it used to be four years i'm not sure if that changed but i know that you definitely have to work for a builder for two years as a supervisor with a supervising license and then you have to apply for your license and to apply for your license you need evidence so evidence meaning that you need to have done certain criteria within that supervising role so applied for council approval on properties you've got to have evidence that you've managed loads of staff or different trades you've managed build start to finish because the license that this is i'm talking about the 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 basic building license which allows you it's a low-rise builder which is the license that allows you to build up to three stories high um so that will give you a license that you can do as as much renovation work as you like structural work when it comes to commercial i think you can do commercial works non-structural up to 2000 square meters like fit out type work as the main contractor as soon as it becomes more than 2000 square meters or there's any structural work involved you're not you're not you're not going to do it on a low rise building license but if you're just looking for residential, it pretty much does everything you need it to do. So your license will allow you to build houses up to three stories, renovate, do everything you want to do structurally, kitchens, bathrooms, everything there. So if you just want to do kitchens and bathrooms, there's one lower than the low rise builder, which is just a restricted builder license for kitchens, bathrooms and laundry. So. You could you could you could look into that which is just a few units from the cert four i think so but i don't know whether you have to do the whole two years as a supervisor I, I i'm not sure on on that but i think you need a lot of evidence and um you need you need references from other builders in the same criteria as what you're you're kind of doing and experience so it'll still be quite a big long lengthy process to go through so i guess i guess the meaning of this is like i guess mainly for people that are thinking about making the move and sort of saying oh you know like it would be nice to do that overseas that in australia like do you know like i've got a little building company here i wouldn't mind doing going over there and setting up and having a better life with it there's a few hurdles that you may you may find <laughs> annoying <laughs> but i guess if you manage to get through everything, it's probably worth it in the end. I'd say it is, like for me it was. I've been here eight years and I do have a small building company and I've been through the motions, like I've done a lot of different stuff here. So when I first came here, I, I was involved in house framing, major renos, extensions, subcontracting to other builders. I've never been employed here. Um, uh, I've, never, I've never gone on the books for anyone. But I did do my cert four and then I went through everything that was required of me to sort of do what I needed to do to get my building license. But I got my license five or six years ago now and the, the law was a bit different back then. I guess it's changed a lot since. I, I was able to prove a lot of my stuff through evidence from the UK and I got different different witnesses and people from the UK as well to help and a couple of builders here that was sort of evidence but I guess even even when I think about the size of the application from mine like it we're talking like something that was sort of this thick in paperwork and then they came back to me and said this isn't acceptable this isn't acceptable so it's st it was still a, loop, a lot of loopholes that I had to kind of jump through to try and get round everything that they required because it was hard like I'm trying to prove something you know from your own country to here and it's and and stuff i've built up here 
I had photos of all sorts of building works and everything to, to try and back up my evidence to say that I could build. But then they were saying because I'd done, uh, you know, house building, it was carpentry work and that was my own trade and that wasn't classed as evidence towards a building license, which makes no sense to me at all because building a house as a carpenter is what essentially you're going to be doing when you're a builder you're going to be employing trades like carpentry and you need to know the structure of a house but they just basically want to a building license here is not a trade it's a license to manage other trades so it's basically a license that allows you to contract all different trades into a building contract with a client so even here with contracting and everything else, it's very strict as well in Queensland. So if you take on a, even as a carpenter or any trade, any trade, forget building, just even if you're a carpenter going to a client and the job comes to $3,300, you've got to put a contract in place and you have to provide a home warranty insurance for that job. And that's regardless of whether you supply the materials or not. So if they supply materials and your labor's $500 and their materials are 2,800, that's hit the, the free free mark. So therefore, it means that you have to then put an insurance in place. So, and a contract, a small, because the insurance is only valid with a contract to that client as well, which is, is crazy to think that, you know, but in some ways, everything is systemed. So I guess like it makes things a little bit harder for your average Joe to just come in and go, I can do that, easy as, like I'll take that on, no worries. Um, if someone knows the law, then they know that, the, you know, realistically, they, you know, they're, they're, they're not gonna take the, take the chance with somebody that's not licensed to anyone. Every trade here has to have a license if they're operating as a contractor unless they're operating as a handyman which means that you can operate as a handyman and provide services to the value of three thousand three hundred dollars so that's a lot of information i know and i yeah i guess that i'm i'm just trying to spread the word and i i've been through so much in terms of trying to get myself to a place where I had my licensing to be able to go out and say, yeah, okay, I can contract because I hold a, a Queensland carpentry license and I hold a Queensland low rise building licenses because I, I specialize in renovations and extensions. We do kitchens, we do bathrooms, we do all sorts of stuff, but um, I don't have a need for any more than that. And with the carpentry license, if I wanted to go out into commercial works and do large scale commercial work with a Queensland carpentry license, I could do a large carpentry package on any commercial build for a builder. But like I said, if I wanted to go into commercial as a main contractor, I'm kind of limited in what I can do on a low rise building license. I'm mainly residential, which means that I can do anything up to a three storey on my license. Um, the purpose of this was really just to, for people who are thinking oh you know like I just want to I want to I want to go and, and give it a go I just I, I feel like there's not a lot of stuff that you can read up on on different licensing laws and how things work and when even if you just want to come here and just be a carpenter like I, I, yeah, I think it's a great country to, to do the job and I feel like the weather's awesome for anyone that wants to come here and and swing a hammer and do, do, do the trade but also at the same time just remember that if you are going to do the trade here you're going to be doing probably a lot of different stuff to what you used to and a lot of different let's just say speed's the factor here so speed is is everything and and if there's a quicker way to do something because they build a lot of houses and and there's a lot of land to build houses speed speed is the main thing so if it means that you chuck in door 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 linings in with a with a with a fixing gun which is what's how it's done <laughs> um instead of you know traditional screwing and and whatever else like that's that's how windows and doors are thrown in and it, it, it it's it's a process that works here and it, it's quick um it 
it's definitely an eye opener in certain areas and i suppose if you want to do the finer things in in carpentry you're probably better off looking towards doing more cabinetry or or or, or finer fix stuff i guess like but cabinetry seems to be i suppose what a lot of english chippies tend to do is go in like myself i did a lot of kitchen installs and still do like do do a lot of kitchen work so um and you know being an english carpenter that's kind of you, you, you trade anyway but here it's it's not classed as as carpentry um carpentry is kind of within 20 mil and cabinetry is within a mil so i guess like if you want to be finer <laughs> you can, you're probably going to look more towards that sort of side of things but i hope this helps some people i i, I really don't know whether it was a, a boring thing or not but um i just tried to put some some info out there anyway I'm I'm probably going to do a few videos of different things and scenarios here anyway so I'm just I'm just hoping to help people that are looking to make the jump and the move and just from a realistic point of view as well like to to give people that opportunity to say oh I don't know if I'm if I'm wanting to make that much of a change in my life or that sounds like a hurdle I can jump like then you know that at least it's helped someone like make that decision or or given someone some guidance that's what I'm, I'm hoping to do because there was nothing nothing out there when we done it and i guess i just jumped in with with um two feet and just took took, <laughs> took the ball by the horns i suppose and just went for it but um yeah it was hard like hard coming here and and and, and then realizing that there's a million more things you have to do to get to where you want to be but I guess that's life in general. So. Right, well, stay tuned for the next one, hey?